and that caused a big war. Mweru ran away, but Umbaba, the terrible chief of the people, caught him and arrested him and brought him to his village. And there, the great chief Korontwari Umbaba said, look, you cut off my thing and I have replaced it with one made of gold and I can't make love to my wife anymore. You think too much, you wretched little human being. Now, Umbaba had a terrible nail in one of his hands, a claw. And with this claw, he drove the claw into poor Mweru's nostril, making a terrible hole into his brain. And he started drinking Mweru's brain. And then he threw away the corpse. To this day, sir, we believe that the people, the Chitauri people, they eat human brains. And strangely enough, scientists have found skulls where the human brain has been removed and eaten by someone or something. Well, the, um, the hearing you speak here, um, so many things uh, come to mind. First of all, you're saying that telepathy was the key form of communication yeah. before the Chilahuli, the reptilians came. Yes, sir. And um, it, I guess it's like a muscle. When you use it, it gets more sensitive and more powerful. So the more you use your telepathy, the more powerful your mind got. And then when language came, it almost brought us into this three-dimensional world and disconnected us from that mind power that we had yeah. before. Yes, sir. And it's also interesting that the, the, the story that you talk about the language being given, and then the different languages being given. And of course, that turns up in the uh, uh, Old Testament, in the Bible. It turns up in stories all over the world about the fact that we were divided by language so we couldn't communicate. And as someone who publishes books, I know today how difficult it is to communicate through books when you've got endless different languages. So yes. it's been a brilliant form of control for a long time. Yes, sir. Even, even now here in South Africa, today, sir, black people prefer to speak to each other in English if they belong to different tribes. And they have even, over the many decades, black youths have even created a lingua franca of their own, which we call Tsotsi, Tsotsi language, which is a mixture of African words and, and Afrikaans words. They do this in order to bridge the incredible language gap which exists between black people in South Africa. Let me show you say, an amusing thing, how different languages are. The, the language of the Khosa people of the Eastern Cape is very similar to Zulu, but certain important words in the Zulu language Good words are viewed as obscenities by the Khosa people. For example, in the language of the Zulus, an ancestral spirit is called Idlos. But if you use that word to a Khosa, he says you are using a dirty word because to them Idlos means sexual desire and in the language of the Zulus mili mil, maize mil is known as impup but in the language of the Babedis maize mil is called bubi and if a Zulu uses the word impup in front of a Babedi woman she feels that he has insulted her because in the Babedi language, Impupu means a woman's sexual organ. And in the language of the Mashonas, in the language of the Zulus, sorry, a mother is called Mama. If I say my mother, I say Mama Wami. But 
In the language of the Mashonas, the people of Eastern Zimbabwe, the word mama means to sit down and have a crack. So one day when I said to my Mashona hosts, umama, which means which in Zulu is I remember my mother, I'm missing my mother. The Mashona gentleman immediately took me and directed me to his pit latrine at the back of his house. <laughs> because in the Mashona way, mother is my, not mom. So you see this terrible difficulty, this subtle problem of language is all is a very big uh, 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 obstacle to communication in Africa. So we designed languages. There is another language called Fanagalo, which is a lingua franca consisting of African words as well as nonsense words and, and Zulu words, which was used a lot in the mines in the 1930s, 40s and 50s. So, to bridge this great language gap, we have created langu artificial languages in Africa, and but today English is the preferred language of communication. Some say we should learn French, also another language of communication in Africa. Some of you know, the problems of language uh, can be uh, funny, but um, it, it is the same situation, the divide and rule, that is actually, in, in uh, other expressions, created this tremendous turmoil in Africa and other places in the world. Yes. And we're, we're looking, from my research, and staggeringly hearing uh, you talk, you're saying exactly the same as I've come across. It's incredible confirmation that a reptilian race from another world has been behind the manipulation of humanity for a very, very long time. Now, what do these Chittahuli actually look like, the reptiles? I'm not a good artist. Sir. You're better than me, that's for sure. But this is how we believe the Chittahuli look like. They were created in this, you, you see, sir, you white people say that there are alien beings on this earth. No, you are wrong. The earth in which we live has produced 24 different races during its long existence. Please, sir, this is how a Chitauri looks like. It stands about 11 feet high. It is a very slender being which seems not to have a bone structure. Its, its fingers have no joints. They are more like, they are more as if the bones in here were flexible. It, uh, some of the Chitauri have got three claws with a thumb. Some have got six claws with a thumb. And some of the Chitauris have got horns on their heads. And what surprises me is this. Some film producers like the producers who, who make the films Star Wars, often show creatures in their films which actually exist, which even the most uneducated of Africans who knows this Chitauli can identify.